Okay, so um, I want to start like out by thanking Patricia for the invite to be able to share with you guys some stuff that I've kind of been talking with her and just kind of um, going over in, you know, like when we evaluate our business. So back in 2019, um, those of you guys that were in Austin, I don't know if you guys noticed the little billboards that were around with like quotes from the guest speakers. But there was one that really caught my eye and it made me really want to evaluate my business. And it was by James Clear. And it's, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Um, I've always heard in my Sensi journey, you know, when you have a goal, if you don't set up a plan, you're kind of just wishing on a star kind of thing. Like you're not really gonna set that goal into motion. But when I read that quote by James Clear, I was kind of like, wow, like you don't raise yourself to your goals. You don't reach your goals because you don't have systems in place to get to your goal. So while goals are great and they're so important in our lives and in our business and for our teams, they're kind of like our personal treasure, right? Like they're the, they're the treasure that we want to get to. But without the systems to achieve those goals, they're merely just a wish. So we have to kind of think of our systems kind of like our little map, our little treasure map. Systems are gonna be what takes us to that treasure, to reaching our goal. So when we are intentional in our business and we set systems in place, we are prepared and we're more likely to succeed. As leaders, it also helps us to kind of be in a position where we can recognize certain things from our team and we can kind of see where we can be more helpful to them. So it makes us be more of a proactive leader rather than a reactive leader. Now, there's a lot of systems that I could go on and on about. And so that's where I'm gonna kind of open it up is for us to, for us to share either a system that we really like that works in our business, or maybe you're thinking, man, like I'm trying to figure out how to set up a system for this particular thing. So you can ask um, other directors on here what they're doing. But um, what I love about systems is that it really helps our business run smoother. Sometimes we get overwhelmed thinking of all the systems we have to put into place because we hear of this person doing this and that person doing that and this person, this is really working for them. But we really have to figure out what's good for us, what is going to work in our lifestyle, with our schedule. What are we going to be able to be consistent with? Because that is like the main, main thing that we have to do when we're running our business, when we're running systems or we're working with our team is being consistent. I always tell my leaders when they tell me, well, like, I'm not, you know, I'm not a leader like you. And I said, that's fine. You don't have to be like me, but whatever you're going to do for your team, be consistent in doing that because they're going to get used to that. They're going to get used to whatever you do. So if one month you do team mail, and the next month you don't, they're gonna kind of be like, what, I didn't get a team mail. Like I didn't get anything. I didn't get a call. I didn't get a text, whatever you're doing. So make sure that when you're establishing your systems that you can be consistent and that they're also entwined with whatever your goals are. When I came back from Austin, I literally came in the mindset of, I'm a director now and I really wanna to promote to star director. So I need to work with my team to help them to get to director. And so I kind of shifted my mindset and my systems to do more of leadership stuff than personal uh, business stuff. So that 80-20 rule that we always talk about, I kind of turned that into like a 50-50 rule. And in October, I promoted my first director. And then in June, I promoted my second director. Um, so when we are setting up these systems, we really have to be also asking ourselves, well, what are, what is my goal? Is my goal a promotion? What do I need to get there besides my sales so that I can set up systems to work with my team? I can set up systems for my, for my business. And that way it helps us work more intentional. When we have our systems, when we know our to-do list, we're kind of more prepared when we sit down to work our business to know what we need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Anybody that wants to share a system or wants to ask a question about a particular system, um, you can just unmute yourself 
and we can all like just kind of chit chat about it. I didn't want to go over all the systems that I do because I know everybody's different. And like I said, it could go on and on for hours if we are just talking about like every little thing. So your time. I got one. How many of us are doing accelerated leadership and everything Liz just said, like is resonating with what we are doing right now? <laughs> so I need help with onboarding. Who has a good system for onboarding? I, with, if you guys don't know, we're doing accelerated leadership and the focus is PRV recruiting and parties. So in six weeks, we have to sell $3,000 of PRV. We have to have five parties and we have to recruit three people. The parties and the PRV for me is easy. Um, the recruiting I'm getting, but I always feel like I don't have a good system for the onboarding. So like once I get the recruit, I always feel like I'm shuffling and trying to send them, especially if I get more than one at once, then I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I send this person? And how did I get this person to do this? So does anybody have any feedback on that? Um, I can start by sharing what I do. I have a checklist that I, um, I will share it with you guys. I will post it on, I will send it in a chat. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like, if I post it on, the, on her team page, I don't know if I'll be able to upload a file, but I have a checklist. Um, I actually, in Austin, I was at the booth um, of onboarding new team members, like setting them up for success. And so I have a checklist that I kind of go through and it's like, you know, 24 to 48 hours. Um, and then like by the end of the first week, by the end of the second week and so on until their 70th day of like things that I go over. So I always try to get on the phone with them. Sometimes if they're, if they really want to work their business, they're willing to get on the phone. If they're kind of more like they're just a kidnapper, those I usually don't, I'm not able to get on the phone. So I just kind of text them. But usually I try to have these little mini coaching sessions over the first couple of uh, weeks and uh, months because I don't, even though I'm the type that I want all the information all at once, like I want to know what I've got, just got myself into, I don't want to bombard them where they're going to freeze and they're not going to do anything. So each little box has like a different thing for me to talk about. So like on the first call, I'm not really telling them about like the warmer of the month and um, incentives. Like I leave that more like towards like our second or third call. I want to get them to set up their launch party, get their list of 100 going. So I'll share that list. And I kind of go over that list. Um, I'm also looking into, and I, and the reason why I'm looking into this is because I sometimes will be texting people and then I'll forget because life gets busy into project broadcast. Um, I don't know if any of you have, are using that yet, but it's kind of like an app. It's like a texting app. And so you set up your template and when you text a person, like it automatically will text them on the schedule you want to text. So I've been looking into that. I've heard a lot of other directors are using that and, um, and star directors. And so I've been kind of like um, starting to like train myself on it to see if it's something I want to do, but you do have to pay for like the service. And I think the only thing I don't like about it is that you get like a separate number. So like all my customers that already have my number are going to be kind of like, who's this, you know? Um, so I'm kind of like looking into it, but it's kind of like the same mind, uh, same idea of Visly, but for a texting. I don't know if you guys are using Visly, but it's kind of like that same thing, but for texting. So I'm looking into that, but I will share with you guys my, my little thing. And what I do is I put their name on the top when they joined. So it's like they're a little sheet and I kind of go and cross off the things as we talk. Um, I do have some people that when I'm on the call, they're like, oh, so I saw this thing about, you know, whatever. And it's like on the third or fourth call and I'll just go over and answer their questions. Um, but I don't like to bombard people. So anybody else have any onboarding ideas or systems? Anybody have like a welcome packet that they send like to everybody? I do. I send like a welcome T 
2019 postcard, um, a catalog, because usually they don't have a catalog, right? Unless they're one of my VIPs that I've already sent one to that I'm flipping or something. Um, I sent them a scent and warmer of the month flyer. And I think that's it. And like uh, a, well, a felt sample or something of one of the new scents. And then um, that's what I sent to everybody. So I'm okay. And I already have like the packets and stuff done. So I think Liz, like the checklist will be helpful to me. I have the old school one, which is the packet, which is like the 70 day sponsor checklist where it's like day one through three, do this. Day four through eight, do this. But I think what you said, like having like Amy on a sheet, Carly on a sheet, Diane on a sheet and be able to check each one of them off will be more helpful to me. Yeah, I literally just threw that packet away when I was cleaning out my office this year. <laughs> I was like, um, I haven't used this in years. I'm not going to keep it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I even open, I even open a file for each of my frontline because I was having a hard time keeping like uh, when I do coaching calls, like I like to take notes, but then I would just have them all over my desk. So I literally open a file for each of my team member, my, my frontline. And I put in there that sheet when they join. And then I put in there, like any coaching calls that we do, whatever notes I take or whatever they're going to be working on, I put it and then I put it in their file. That way, if I have a follow-up coaching call with um, Ashton, I can just pull out her file, go over what we talked about last time, whatever it was that we had said her homework was, and I can follow up on that um, instead of just having it all scattered all over the place. So um, I'm very, very like OCD sometimes with like organization, because if not, it's just going to get thrown on top of my desk and I'm never going to find it again. Any system, any other systems that you guys have that you guys are that you guys do that like you guys just love it works perfectly. Anything for follow up. The only thing that seems to work for me right now is Amy. Okay. Because. Like my life is um, over here and over here. And over here. As you can see, I don't know if you guys can tell, I have a sunburn from here up from being at a cookie booth all day long. So I'm rocking that. But so I don't even have time to like do anything. So Amy has put it all in one place for me. And, um, and it's been very beneficial. I've, I've enjoyed that. So. That's awesome. Ashley, do you find that you miss anybody on the Amy app? I feel like sometimes it's not capturing like everything. And I don't know if it's the settings. Um, Cause I did Amy like when it first came out, whenever Liz, was that SFR like Anaheim 18 was when we got Amy, it was like Maven, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so I really, really liked it. I did it. And then it was like, I felt like things were falling off. And then when I would go to like my contacts and try to see who I can you know, message about an LTO coming up and be like, oh, I haven't messaged this person for an extensive period of time. And then I felt like I was missing people. Do you have that problem, Ashley? I have not encountered that problem, but now I'm going to watch for it and I'll let you know. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me know. Cause that's, I mean, I like Amy and I still use it, but I still use the old school binder moving orders and type stuff because I just like to see it on paper and then that way I know that I've touched that customer I've done this with that customer and then I can move on to the next one so let me know I'm definitely I prefer pen and paper for follow-ups but I have fallen behind on my order on my binder and I don't use order forms anymore and so the other day I was writing down on my planner I'm like create a follow-up tracker to put in my binder, like to put with my thank you uh, binder. Cause I'm like, I need it like in pen and paper where I can just kind of like write notes and stuff like that. Like I, I loved Amy and I like that I can take it everywhere, but I felt like I'd go days without checking it. Like I would go like, and like, then I would fall behind on my mind. I'm like, great. And I have to send like 40 texts to people. Cause I haven't done it in like two months. <laughs> like, like I would fall behind because I didn't 
have like I, it's not I guess registered in my thing to like go check Amy every single day so that is an issue that I've had. And I actually, when we started this call, it reminded me, oh, you need to check Amy tomorrow. Cause I have in my, like in my mind that I'm going to do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And so I put a reminder on my phone to check it. It needs to have like push notifications. I yeah. Like, I feel like it should tell at least like, you know, where you can say like a day, like, Hey, like send me like a little alert on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Like it does have that. I get does? notifications. Yeah. I'll get an alert that says I have like however many what? to do's to do. I'm yeah. right now. Right now I'm looking for the notification. Like how I don't, I, that I don't know how. It just I just does. Um, I'm gonna figure out how to turn them on. Oh my god. Yeah, because yeah. I literally I, don't like, I would see the do. I would see the bubble like once I clicked on it, and like when I see little bubbles. I can't focus. So like I, right now I said 69 to do's. I like, we'll probably sit here and clear all those 69. Cause I just, I can't see little bubbles. Mm -hmm. So, but if I don't click on it, it doesn't tell me anything. So I'm going to have to go through like the settings and stuff and see. Okay. So yeah, go to account. If you have the app, go to the accounts on the bottom and then you have to click allow notifications. Cause I just did. And now it's all like, okay, 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to tell me to thank my customer the next day. Oh, Janelle, you have just made my life so much easier. What? Yay. Thanks, Janelle. <laughs> Hold on. You went to accounts and then what? Accounts and. Oh, and then um, to do preferences. To do. Okay. Thank you, Janelle. You're welcome. Woo -hoo, teamwork. Look at us. <laughs> That's like the only system I have. So <laughs> thank you. I like that. Um, yeah. The only thing I don't like about Amy, and this is just because I play around with my orders, is when yeah. I bundle things together and then I'm like, crap, like I can't write into my workstation, like side note, this is also so and so's order. Mm -hmm. for me to remember but sometimes when I'm doing my follow-ups on Amy I'll remember like she didn't order all these but like oh yeah I, I put the bars with this person so like let me send them a text but um you know you win some you lose some because we're just so good at what we do that we just kind of play around with our orders mm -hmm. that's the main reason I don't use Amy so I have like a massive spreadsheet and I type all my orders in there and then I have like little check boxes at the end of um, and I put the dates of when I received the order, the date that I dropped it off to them. And then I put the dates that I need to get back with them. And then I can just mark in the little boxes once I've done that. So you have that on your computer mm -hmm. and how was your system for like updating it and follow like your follow-ups? Like, do you have like a specific day that you do follow-ups then or? Usually Friday, yeah. Friday is what okay. I call them. So I like yeah, that. I stare at spreadsheets all day at work anyway. So what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. See, and like I I used to love my binder and I used to carry it with me all the time. Like literally I would just carry it in my purse and like in the car line I would pull it out. Um, but I had like Mondays was my day to do follow-ups. Cause that way, like if they wanted to order, they usually they'll order on Friday because that's when they get paid, whatever um it would give them the week to like be like oh let me look through the catalog and I could kind of follow up but then I let it go and now it's like I don't even use order forms like I really don't use order forms like yeah. hardly ever I want, can you just print the order from workstation and have that I, I can but that's so much ink <laughs> <laughs> it is. so like I have like a thank you I have like a thank you log that I like use for like when I get orders on PWS and I literally was going to create something just like that where it just said like uh, customer name what they ordered when they ordered it and then like follow up so I could just carry it with me in my planner and that way wherever I'm at if I want to do follow-ups I, I have it there but I haven't done it yet Sometimes things just stay up here. Yeah, I know. That's the hard <laughs> part, right? Getting them from here to there. <laughs> well, I was going to ask like on the director page, like, has anybody already done this? Like, so I don't have to recreate it, but I haven't gone around to it. This month has been crazy. It like flew. I feel like, mm -hmm. like 
January lasted like 20 years and you blinked and February was over. Yeah. yeah. So, so we've talked about follow-ups, onboarding. Um, anybody else have any other systems that they, that they absolutely love? Or that work for them in their business. It doesn't have to be like, doesn't have to be a structured like paper. It could be just anything that you do in your business that you have like a system for. Like, for example, yeah. I started doing bulk samples and I love it so much better than doing samples every single month. Like, I don't really even make samples of the scent of the month anymore. <laughs> like, I'll make like 30 and then I'm done. Like, I do my bulk samples and then I'm like set for like three to, three to six months and I love it. So any other ideas or any other feedback or any questions? Y'all are so quiet tonight. I could tell it's month end. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have um, a system for like when they look at numbers or? My gosh, I look at numbers like <laughs> daily, <much>. hourly. <laughs> 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 yeah. I look at the dashboard like 10 million times a day yeah but yes. I okay. run re I run reports on certain days so like right now I have a couple of new people so I check it like often so I guess if I look at my dashboard and notice a change then I'm I'm looking to see who yeah you know, whose numbers went up you know do I need to congratulate anyone so yeah yeah I have um, so I have a, uh, somebody on my team who's been on for a year and they're doing, it's a, their husbands, they're doing great. So the problem the thing that I've like ran into that I'm kind of wondering how everyone deals with is they don't add their team. Um, I'm, I'm new to being a director. I've only been a director for a few months, but they don't add their team onto the directing page. Like they don't add them onto my team page. So how do you reach out without feeling like you're stepping on somebody's toes? Carly, when you get those emails um, that someone in your downline like has a person, do you yes. respond to both your frontline and that new person? Do you send them something mm -hmm. like an email or a text or something? Okay. Yep. So how I do it is I just tell them, hi, I'm Amy. I'm your upline director. Welcome to the team. Blah, 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 blah. I give them my phone number, a link to the Facebook page, and then um, just like a fun little like motivational quote or something like that. And then mm -hmm. I leave it up to them. Like if they want to join my, mm -hmm. you know, team page or if they want to join the group page or whatever they want to do. Cause I know sometimes, I don't know if you guys feel like this, but sometimes the different pages can get daunting and overwhelming. Um, and like you said, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but it's like, you have to follow this one and you have to like this one and you have to comment on this one. So I, I just kind of leave it up to them. And so far it's been pretty responsive that they'll say, thank you so much. And then I see that they like want an invitation or whatever to get accepted to the Facebook group. So. So before I promoted to star director, that's exactly what I would do. Um, I didn't have any I don't think I had any big issues on people not adding people to the team page until I had directors start promoting. And then they were like, well, they don't need to be on your team page. And I'm like, well, but we share so much on the team pages. And to me, team pages are more important than other Sensi pages because there's so much drama on Sensi pages and so much negativity. And I'm like, I don't want them to like go on a Sensi page and have everyone complaining about LTO selling out and all these people like being negative. Whereas on the team page, we try to keep everything positive and light. Um, I don't get emails for my directors. So like if my directors re uh, recruit or someone on their team recruits, I don't get an email. So what I do is I run a report at the end of the month and I send them all a welcome mail, like a welcome postcard. And it says on there, like, um, like I, I introduce myself and I just say, I'm another cheerleader along with your director and sponsor. 
Um, and I kind of tell them like, you know, if you'd like to join the team, like uh, the group team page, you're more than welcome to, um, but your first up, first, first point of contact is your sponsor and your director. So I kind of like let them know kind of like the chain of commands and my directors kind of mm -hmm. already know what, what I send out to them. So they're kind of like already know that they're going to, they're going to get something in the mail from me, but it's a very simple postcard and I can share that too. Um, I haven't, I always like let them choose. I've had people that have left the team page, have people that have um, not been added to the team page. And I feel like as long as their sponsor is giving them what they need, like, would I love everybody on the team page? Yes. But as long as their sponsor is helping them, then I'm not worried. I worry when I know that their sponsor is not helping them. And then I just kind of reach out kind of like, Hey, I just wanted to see how everything's going. I don't do it in a way of like, is your sponsor helping you? No, I kind of just be like, Hey, I just wanted to know how everything's going. If there's anything I could do for you. And then that kind of starts building that friendship with that person. And if they're not getting the help from their sponsor, but they really okay. want to work their business, they'll work with you. Like they'll, they'll come to you. I have people that come to me from, you know, several downlines because their team members are not very active. So just building those friendships, they don't have to be on the team page um, for you to build that friendship, but it happens to all of us at some point. I do the same. Um, you guys are going to learn once you get to know me that I, uh, my life is all about the relationships that I have with friendships and, and whatnot. And so um, connecting with those people is more what I'm worried about. Um, so I will, um, first I talk to the, the downline of whoever is their sponsor and say, hey, you know, is it okay if I reach out to this person um, via Facebook? And then I will friend request them. And then that kind of lets me get to know them because of what they're posting in their timeline and stuff. And so I can connect um, and, you know, cheer them on, if you will. So that's been helpful just to get to know them because then if their upline is not um, giving them what they need, they've reached out to me previously instead of me having to go, hey, how are you doing? Or some, you know, most of the time I am, hey, how are you doing? But if there's like an issue then, and, so, and actually that happened with Liz one time um, there was a couple, there was someone, a couple under me, I was out of town, her upline had a product she wanted, but wasn't following some rules. She messaged Liz and it was like a big thing. And, uh, but without that relationship that had been built, she may have never thought, Hey, you know, she would have thought that breaking the rules was the end all be all. <laughs> so, <laughs> the relationships are important to me. And we saved the day. <laughs> Um, yeah, I totally agree with Ashley. I think that also when you're doing trainings for your team members, I I've done it before and I do it maybe once or twice a year. I remind everybody that even though they're directors or they're their sponsor, I still have responsibilities as a direct, as a director and a star director. So like I did a training about like, um, what to expect from your sponsor and what to expect from your director per Sensi requirements. And so I kind of let my leaders know, like, I'm not trying to overstep. I'm trying to do what I need to do. And I kind of compare it to, I was telling um, one of my leaders this, cause I, I do have some that are very like, I don't want you reaching out to my team. And I was, explaining to them, I'm like, like, if so, for example, like, let's say that you have consultant A, and then she has a downline, and then her downline, something happens. Well, guess what? Sensi's going to email her sponsor, and then they're going to email me as her director. They're not going to email you because you're her sponsor. So I still have to be somewhat involved in making those relationships, because I have responsibilities as a director. So I think just letting people know that you're not trying to overstep, that you're just trying to make sure that you are meeting the requirements that Sensi is requiring of you. And that at the end of the day, you're all working together. Um, it's not about overstepping unless you're literally trying to say to someone, don't contact your sponsor, come to me. <laughs> like if you're helping their downline with training or by answering a question, um, I think we're at the end of the day, we're all just helping each other. 
Now, when I do have people come to me, I do ask them, have you reached out to your sponsor? Have you reached out to your director? Because I don't want them jumping the, the ladder and then their sponsor's like, well, I could have helped them, but they never came to me. And it has happened. And so when I do that, they're like, oh, well, no, she's working. I'm like, okay, I can help you, you know? Um, and then I'll let their sponsor know like, hey, this person reached out to me uh, for this. I helped them with it. Um, they, they knew that you were working, you know, type of thing. So I kind of do let them know like, hey, like you're not supposed to just come to me because I'm your director or your star director. You're supposed to go to your sponsor, go call consultant support, you know, type of thing. But um, but I, I love Amy's idea of emailing them with the link of the team page or sending them something in the mail, like with the team page name or something like that, that can let them decide for themselves. What I do for my team, I don't add my teammates to anything. I don't add them to any pages. I have pages on my team page that are like um, recommended pages, whatever. And I have the ones that like, I value the most. Like I had like all about the samples on there, um, the page for Heidi and Orville um, and stuff like that. But like I said, they're gonna find groups on their own. I don't like a lot of the groups because of all the drama and stuff. So I don't add anybody to any group. If they want some information, they can use our team page is my mentality. And if they wanna join other team, uh, other groups, then they're more than welcome to join any group. If someone comes to me and says, oh, I wanna get some t-shirt branded, Sensi branded t-shirts, I'll tell them, hey, here are some groups, you know? I'll suggest what they want, but I don't add people to groups or I don't even suggest them at the beginning. I don't want them getting overwhelmed and getting that negativity from other people. So we try to keep our group very positive. And I know a lot of my directors do too. Like they, it's all about positivity. We cut that negativity, like, nope, not on our page, sorry. Come vent. Come vent to me on a chat all day long. Text me, but don't vent on the team page. <laughs> like, no. Very good question. I loved it. Diane, you're so quiet. Janelle, you too. You guys are so not so quiet. <laughs> it's been a long day. I, um, I had someone sign up under me. I don't know who she was. Um, and she signed up under me and I went and met with her today. And I spent two hours with her. She's deaf. So it was um, a little bit challenging, but not as challenging as I expected because she can read lips. Okay. Uh, her husband is going to help her and uh, he was there. So, and she speaks. So enough for me to understand what she's saying. And so it wasn't too bad. And she's older and she's not the greatest on the computer. So <laughs> if I need, if I need her to be, on something like the team page, I have to send, I have to give it to her. Like I have to be like, just click here. <laughs> so she's so sweet, but um, it was a long day. <laughs> I, I love the, I, I actually went to a customer today. She, she found me, I guess on the website and I don't even know how, cause I asked her if she had an email. She doesn't have an email. She doesn't really understand internet, but she's 87 years old. <laughs> and had gotten a warmer and wants wax. So I told her, you know, she called me, I asked me for a catalog. I mailed her a catalog, some samples and stuff. And um, she called me last night and she's like, I, I want two floral, two wood be and two um, spice. And I was like, okay, but which kind? And like, I kind of walked through her and finally decided on Luna, Las Gardenia, Bonfire Beach, Mystery Man and Welcome Home. And so I was like, okay, fine. So I had two okay. of the six bars and I went, I was like, let me go deliver these two and I'll get the money and I'll order the other ones. She was like, dear, your kids want to come in. I was like, man, you're probably going to be like my kid's grandma. Like, <laughs> you're <laughs> like, she's like, do you have any uh, warmers that are like on clearance? And I was like, well, I can send you what I have in stock. Do you have an email? She's like, I don't have email, but you can send them to this phone I'm trying to understand. And she had like her phone number taped on the back. Oh. I didn't see my grandma. I was like, oh my God. Pretty <laughs> little old lady. That's so cute. And so I was like, I'm going to text you pictures tomorrow because the kids want to go to the pool. And she's like, yeah, you go be a mom. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. She was the cutest little old lady. Um, but there is a group for, um, is it ASL? Like 
Mm -hmm. Is there? Yeah, there, yeah, there is a group for um, consultants that require ASL on Facebook. You might want to ask on the director page. I don't know what, what it's okay. called, but I'll, I know there I'll is. Find it and send it to her. Thank you. I did not know that. Yeah, so. there is um, a consultant. Her name is Lacey Perkins. Per I think it's Perkins. She is really big in making everything into like sign language. So she, a lot of her YouTube videos, you'll see like her video and then like her signing the video. Uh -huh. So okay. um, you might want to look her up on, I think she has YouTube videos. Um, it might, it might be Facebook lives, but I think that there are YouTubes um, and you know, like whatever is like training, you might want to send to her cause she does the okay. same. Yeah. Cause she's like, I watched some videos. She's like, but I don't know everything they're saying. <laughs> and I was like, well, just click through and pretend you watched those just so it looks like it's yeah. done for first things first stuff. And I was like, just click through and <laughs> like you watched it. And I said, there probably are videos on there that, that have yeah. something. I said, but, um, I don't know. I can figure it out for you, but th that'll be helpful if I can just send her the Facebook group. Cause she, yeah, has there is a Facebook group and I'm I'm pretty sure that Lacey, I, cause I've seen her, I've seen videos where she's signing stuff okay. and then she has like the caption. So she probably has a YouTube channel and that would help probably like have training videos on different things that she could like actually watch and capture everything. Yeah. Cause it's so hard to do. I mean, she's texting and emailing me, but it's so hard to do some things that way when you can't be like, okay, well click on this. Okay. And now do this. Well, because yeah. do it with her in real time. So I was like, if you need me to come back in a couple weeks to go over something else with you. But she did. I showed her how to enter all of her orders. And then I just sat there and watched her enter them all and made, made sure she got it good. I told her about all of the rewards and all that stuff. So that's awesome. Congratulations on your new team member. Thanks. I got to get my button gear for ACL because I got to do me pretty too. much thing in March. <laughs> like I said, I blinked in February it was over. I'm like, what? It's, it's been a crazy month, but, and the new incentive starts tomorrow. So everything will, will count towards that. I'm kind of excited to hear what the, I mean, even though they say it's pretty much like grow with the flow, but still like you get excited about like hearing what it is, what are the requirements, what do I got to do and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. Anything else? Any other questions or assistance? I just want to say that I'm super excited to share that incentive with my whole team because I didn't have a team last year. You earned level three because you got yourself a team. That's right. But yeah. I know I was kind of I was kind of sad when I, I was watching um Rachel Pence make like these little cute boxes for her incentive earners. And I mean I know that her team is like probably 10 times my size but she had 42 people and I'm like I didn't even have one <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have one to send anything to I'm like I had more people to earn and grow with the flow than <laughs> so I'm excited to see like this one come around I think last year we had five or six earn it we had quite a bit so I'm excited and I'm excited for SFR, even though I won't be seeing y'all in person. I know, I'm, I'm so, so sad. mad. So and mad. I was talking with Beth yesterday, and I said, I just, like, I been up for, like, the last six weeks, and I'm like, I don't know, and and we both agreed that it's it's tough because we haven't been able to go and do those things as, like, a huge Sensi family, and, and the, I'm like, I went to SFR and then World Tour, and then now I have nothing, and I'm like, I want that so bad me too Girl. i haven't even had a real sfr i know <sighs> Girl, i hear you i've had february has been the worst month in like the last six years hmm. for me well not in six years but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's it been, has been my worst month i'm literally i'm not even gonna lie being quite honest i'm not even paid at tight i'm not even paid at director right now and it's not because of my team mm -hmm. I know it's because of me, me. Looking at my numbers and I'm like you know if you would have gotten off your rear end and actually done something this month I would be paid at title but yeah like I literally I I'm not even at 500 and I'm like when have I ever struggled to get to 500 like I can get 500 in my sleep I've gotten no PWS orders this month 
from no one or sensi.com it's been like i'm like like I, when you when i say i blink i'm like am i dreaming is february really over do i still have a week and i did take a week off because i had some personal issues but i'm like i only took one week off there was three other weeks like what happened okay. Yeah. So it's been a really tough month. And I think that even though we had world tour and stuff like that, like, I feel like it's not the same, like sitting at home and watching videos instead of being at breakout sessions. Mm-hmm. I haven't even watched the videos from world, from world tour. I watched the general sessions and that was it. Mm-hmm. I watched I some of do that. Who said, oh, you didn't, <laughs> Carly, was that you that say you didn't do that? I didn't even do that. <laughs> no, I watched that. I watched that, but I didn't watch. I didn't watch, and there was not a lot of training in the general sessions. It was more like reveals and stuff like that. Like they had like a little bit, but not. It's just been I haven't found time to watch the the breakout. So Some of the breakouts are kind of fun to watch because they're people from other countries and uh-huh. so when they're speaking some of them it's hard to understand and some of them are talking in their language and there's like a voiceover and I was like, mm-hmm. so I'm like I cannot listen to this because the voice of the person that's talking is not matching the face of the person that I <laughs> I'm going to have to take spring break since I won't have to like take the kids anywhere and like just sit on the computer and like listen to them because I really need to get my my button gear but like, I feel like I need like to see, like to gather with Sensi family, to like have those yeah. sessions where you're just throwing ideas around. I don't know if, um, I know Diane, you were there. I don't know if Amy and Carly met us at the pool at, in Austin, but we we're just like chilling at the pool for like three hours, just I know talking yeah. business, just like sharing ideas. And it was amazing. Like, it was just so nice to like hear from other people. And when you're talking about like a struggle, they're like, well, this is how I overcame it. And it doesn't matter how many times you have a Zoom or you do like Marco Polo, it's not the same. And so I was really, I, I, I called my husband crying when SFR was announced, canceled. I told him, I was, I was like, well, I won't be going to SFR. And he's like, why? And I was like, they just canceled it. I'm like, it's going to be at home again. You know, it's so, so, fun. so we'll see what happens. Um, I called Jamie crying because I told Jamie that like the week I met her my five-year walk will be my director walk which was this year and I did it and then it got canceled and I bawled my eyes out Carly where do you live (laughs) in Illinois Illinois we are going to make that five-year walk (laughs) director walk possible even if I have to like just like send balloons your way and call you on zoom and have you walk (laughs) <laughs> make that happen <laughs> my five-year walk was amazing and my five-year walk was what turned around I, I said I told Beth that night I was like I don't ever want to get off that stage mm. I was like I'm walking as a director next year and I'm never getting off that stage again <laughs> and I did I got to walk as a director and I felt bad that we didn't get to and go this year because we had so many directors that would have done their first walk and um I think that by the time we have SFR again hopefully I will never do my my star director walk but still like I'm like can I walk twice can I walk for a star director and then for superstar <laughs> I was telling Beth I'm like how are they gonna do the flower thing for superstar directors they should just start sending flowers to people when they promote because they're not yeah. going to be able to do that with so many superstar directors that have promoted. <laughs> like, it's going to be like, sorry, just walk. <laughs> just like, keep you going. Don't for, us, for yourself anymore. <laughs> sorry, we've had too many. But uh, I just, I need SFR to happen. And I had everybody that lives in North Carolina would be like, our state is still closed. I'm like, shh, shh don't tell us that. Like, let us, let, let us hope and dream that we're going to be there. But it's all good. We'll see what happens. How is everyone planning on breathing some energy back in their team next month? Because I don't know about you guys, but my team has went like flat hard. Like, boom. That was <laughs> our Not even half call. of them are active. I'm like. <laughs> that was our director call. So we had, I had my team director call last Sunday. And we, that was literally what we talked about. Like our, our team spire is out. Mm-hmm. I have three frontline active this month. Three. So do I. That's it. That's, so I yeah. I'm like, 
<laughs> Over the fall, I had 14, 15. Like, where are you guys? Are you guys sleeping? <laughs> um, but I will tell you guys this. Last January and February were so bad for me that I literally wanted to quit. Like, I literally thought, okay, Sensi has run its course. I'm, like, literally, like, biting, like, like, I'm really struggling to get customers. And then I was having some team issues. And I wanted to quit. March was good. April was amazing. So I know that they switched the catalog, but I think a lot of our customers still think that the catalog comes out in March. So like last year, I didn't struggle to get people active and stuff like that. So I'm hoping that it will be kind of like last year um, because I had to keep telling myself that last month and this month, like remember last year was the same. Last year was really bad. It was really slow. So like, it kind of has like the same pattern. I didn't see how many people I had active last year versus this year, but I know that in March, it started picking up. And with the pandemic, I was scared and I was surprised with the month that I had in March and April, because I thought since it's going to have to close its doors and we actually did really, really good. So that's, we hit, I hit three month director consistency and now I'm in the queue. Like we just did really, really well. And then we got to our, October is when we kind of just backslid. And then this month we're doing okay. Like out of 32, 20 have sales, but they're like 50 bucks. Yeah. And then my top five have over 500. So it's kind of, I don't know if it's just like no time. Like a lot of my people that have sales, I know just don't have time. Like they're crazy. Yeah. Well, I know that Orville said something about like, and, and I know it's kind of hard because you see all these people saying like they, they have 2000 and 4,000 and all these sales, but he did say at one point, he po posted a comment saying that we're coming off of the high season. So we can't expect it to continue to be the same. It's going to kind of plummet. Um, I know my customers right now, like a lot of them, they're so busy during the holidays and stuff like that. Like they buy their Sensi, whatever, but then like now it's like there's kind of like time to like kind of like catch up with everything else and uh, winter sports are starting and all that kind of stuff. So um, we did a, a training this past Tuesday and we just kind of shared ideas of what we do to get sales. I had, um, Ashley kind of talked about like, you know, working your business regardless of what your sponsor is doing. Cause sometimes their sponsor's not doing anything. And then they're like, well, I don't have to do anything. And then we had another director talk about scent crates because she does amazing with scent crates. Like she gets, you know, at least two to $500 in scent crate orders every single month. So she um, talked about that. And then I kind of just talked about like being consistent, posting often. I don't care how busy you are you can post on Facebook at least once a day. Like I can't stand when I'm on a coaching call or I'm just catching up with someone and they're like, well, I just don't have time. Really? You can schedule them for the whole week. Right. Yep. <laughs> but not only that, I'm pretty sure, and I'm just being quiet, this is, this is me. I'm pretty sure you're playing a game while you're uh, sitting on the toilet. So <laughs> take a second, <laughs> turn on a Sensi warmer and post it and then continue your game. Like. We have our phones glued to our hands at all times. You have a moment where you can post at least once. Like, I'm not asking you to go live every day. I'm just asking you to be consistent so your customers don't second guess that you're a Sensi consultant. Um, and then, Ashley, what else did we talk about? I don't have my notes with me. What other ideas did we share? I don't know, you said shitting. Like, <laughs> did you say shitting or sitting? Sitting. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like oh my I'm dying over here <laughs> oh my gosh um, <laughs> um, I, I don't even remember that was it's okay it's like it's like that white chick movie I that was 4,000 boxes of cookies ago I don't, I don't <laughs> so Carly I asked that same question I actually had the accelerated leadership call before our director call at seven. And I asked that same question and there was, I don't even remember her name, Robin something is a superstar director that's in my group. And she said, you need to stop worrying about the people that are on your team. If they're not doing anything, you need to go recruit more. And the, like the way she said it, I was like, Oh, okay. 
um, what do you mean by that? Cause I still love my people. Like I still want to support them. I, and she's like, no, she's like, you have like your five, right? So like your three or your five that are always active. She said, take them, lead them and grow with them. And she said, the rest of them will might get upset because they're not a part of this stuff, but she said they will either jump in or they'll jump off. But she said, if you keep recruiting, cause I have a team of 39. So she's like, yeah, you need to double that by the end of March. And I was like, what? By the end of <laughs> that, March? That's what she said. She said you really? By the end of March. And I was like, um, okay. Like, but she was dead serious. So that's what I'm just going to tell you is because I asked that exact same question because I said, I felt like February just came and went. I had no real connections, no real contacts with anybody. And now I'm here. And now I'm sitting at the end of the month looking at the workstation like, holy crap. So just, you know, that's what she said to me. So I don't know, take that with a grain of salt. I don't really think I can double a team of 39 in 31 days, but maybe add five. I mean, that's what I'm shooting for is five new team members. So no, I love that. I love that. <laughs> honestly, like I'm someone who will sit like when I'm making dinner and like watch any type of YouTube I can that tells me to get off my butt and work my business because I work three jobs. I'm a workaholic and sometimes I get burnout. And right now I'm like, I don't even want to talk to my team because I work all the time. And I can put numbers on the board. Why are you giving me excuse after excuse? And I used to get frustrated and I don't want to ever, because I coach volleyball. So like, I don't ever want to come off snotty, no matter if it's a child or an adult and say, if I can do this, you can do this. <laughs> so I just- Sometimes I you have to though. That. Like I, my team knows, maybe not the new people because they're still getting to know me, but my team knows that I don't BS. I will tell you things straight up. I'll be nice about it. I'm not going to like, you know, curse at you or yell at you or whatever, but I'm very blunt and I'll sit there. I actually had a, a, um, I was also doing a coaching training with the Spanish uh, market of Sensi. So we had to do coaching calls and um, I had a coaching call with one of my directors and she's a very busy, busy woman. She, you know, is a single mom. She works um, and all that kind of stuff. And she's, she's young. So she has her social life and all that kind of stuff. And she was telling me all these things. And I was like listening to her and I was like, okay. And I was like, and so what are you going to do about it? And she's like, well, I don't know because, and I was like, I'm not going to give you the answers. Like, I need you to think of what fits in your schedule. Like I don't run your schedule. I, I would I can't even imagine. I have a husband that helps me with the kids. I have, you know, two kids that are a little bit older than yours. I'm not, I don't work right now um, and stuff like that. So I was like, I don't know what fits into your schedule. We need to work, find what works. Um, but there's been times where I get these excuses and I will either pull out a training or I will coach them and I'll be like, stop it with the excuses. You can't have excuses and results. Like you cannot, like you can't say I want to lose weight and not, exercise and eat right like either you do or you don't you know and I kind of break it down to them with something that's more uh visible for them because with Sensi it's like okay well yeah if I work my business I, I make money whatever but they don't that's not something that they can see like that they can put into place so I kind of like I'll bring it to something else like you know a weight journey or you know, like I tell him, I'm like, do you go to work and just sit on your, on your butt all day? Like, no, like if you want that paycheck, you have to work. So if you want to get a paycheck with Sensi, you have to put something in. I'm not asking you for eight hours a day, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour sometimes. And a lot of people will look at my team will be like, oh, well, yeah, but you're a stay at home mom. Yeah. I'm a stay at home mom. Exactly. I'm when I was quarantining my kids that we were doing e-learning. I was teaching my daughter. I was keeping my son entertained. I was keeping them entertained all day long. And I was still working my business. I'm also a Girl Scout troop leader. I'm also a, a youth leader at church. I'm all, my kids were in dance. I was like, I'm a very busy person. Just because I don't work doesn't mean I don't, I have all the time in the world. I have less time because I don't see adults. I don't get to interact with adults that I can sell Sensi to. I got to go find customers. And when I kind of, and blunt and straight up with them sometimes they're like oh yeah I can see that. and it has worked some of them they're still gonna make excuses but um 
I love, I don't know if you've ever listened to any excuse busting uh, training out there from Sensi, but I have one on my YouTube channel and I know that um, Katie Farner has one. Um, who else has one that I've watched? I'm pretty sure Chloe Cox has one. Um, but I literally <laughs> you want to hear her yell at you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, sometimes, sometimes I need her to yell at me though. Sometimes she can be motivating, and sometimes I'm like, oh, she's right. <laughs> I need to get off my butt. Yeah, sometimes I sometimes I'm like, like literally when I need to get off my butt, I go and I look up a Chloe Cox video because she will like just me and be like, I bet like, okay, Liz. Go get go get to work before Chloe pulls out the belt. Like, <laughs> like literally. Um, but look up like Sensi excuse busting and either share it with your team or write your notes and make it your your own and tell them like you cannot have excuses and results. Either you work your business or not. Um, and I agree with what Amy said, but oh, I have such a hard time when people tell me that. Because if it was easy to sponsor, don't you think I right. would be doing it, lady? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm asking everyone. Yes. So it's so no, hard no. to hear that sometimes because like I literally, I've had moments with like, with Beth, where I like, I'm crying and I'm like, I'm doing everything you're doing. And she's like, Liz, I can't even tell you what to change because you're doing everything I do and more. And I don't know why you're not getting better results. But like, I literally mm -hmm. ask every host, every time I have a kit up, uh, kit up for grabs, I offer it. And sometimes I'll get lucky. Like at the end of November, I had three recruits back to back. That, everybody's like, what are you doing? Nothing that I haven't been doing. I've been doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. I offered two hosts as a kit. They both took it. And then I had a lady that I've been asking for four years to join, finally join. She's sitting at zero, but it's okay. So she joined. So I'm like, you know, like it. sometimes it just happens. But when people tell me that, they're like, oh, just go, you know, build a new team. And I know Orville said it in Vegas when we were in, ba in Vegas in 2015. I remember him saying it takes less energy to find a new team than to try to motivate an unmotivated team. But <laughs> when they tell me that, I'm kind of like, lady, I'm trying. I'm asking. Okay. I don't know what to do, you know, but it's true. Just keep, keep sponsoring and work with the ones that want it. Work with the ones that want it. That's my and Carly. Problem. I don't know if you like to read, but she also <laughs> said, she said, now that I told you that she said, if you want to try to motivate the people that you have, she said that there was this book by Dan, hold on, Daniel Pink. And it was called drive something. Like drive was like the title. And then there was, you know, like other, you know, self-help stuff underneath. So I haven't looked it up yet, but it was by Daniel Pink, P-I-N-K. So Thank I'm going to look at that on Amazon probably sometime this week and just order it and see, because I do enjoy to read. Um, but I don't know if that'll help you too. Another good book is Start With Why. That's the one I'm reading right now. And it's about leadership. It's about leadership and like, leading with the why um Ashley asked, okay um well you guys next time do the ACL program it's amazing even if you don't achieve it it's amazing it like literally kicks your butt in gear I, love I just it. felt like it wasn't the right time for me because I was in such a funk for a while and I'm like this is I can't do this right now because I'm not going to succeed. And then I'm going to be even more mad at myself. So I'm like, Diane, um, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to bust your excuse. Um, this is going to sound terrible. I signed up a few days after my dad passed away because I knew it wouldn't let me go into a funk. That's good. So, and the good thing about ACL and she says this in the introductory video, she says, even if you don't graduate, Mm -hmm. you still accomplish more. One of my directors did it in the fall and she didn't graduate, but she hit $2,000 a month for the first time three months in a row because she was an ACL because mm -hmm. I was one of the requirements. She's like, I didn't graduate because of the sponsoring, but I was asking more people than I would have asked. And it happens to us when we're in an incentive, usually during an incentive, we're asking for more sales. We're asking more people to join because we want those points. 
So I kind of love that ACL while they're giving us good training, they have those requirements because it kind of pushes us to work our business. Um, and I decided to do it because I knew that because I did it before and I didn't graduate. And I said, oh, but I didn't graduate last time. And I was like, but you still did better than if you didn't do it. So even if you don't graduate, you'll still get more out of your business than if you're just not doing it. So um, go with that mentality next time of, even if I don't graduate, mm -hmm. um, because I think the success behind ACL is changing your business to focus on the $2,000 a month, the five parties, and then the sponsoring, not necessarily graduating. Um, and she does share a lot of stuff. Like uh, we were talking about, we're, we're going over like the five, I can't remember the name of it, five. Um, oh, Amy or Ashley, please tell me. What is it, what is it called? The five steps to something. So one of them is like prepare, then it's like your why. Oh, the five fundamentals. Yes, the five yes. fundamentals. So she breaks that down for training and then she really dives in. And if you've never seen a training with Sydney, she was a coach before she came to Sensi. She is amazing. I've done a couple of coaching sessions with her as, as star directors. That's the perk that you get and that she brought to Sensi. And let me tell you, those coaching calls, like, it's literally me talking the whole time and she'll just ask me questions to get me to resolve my own problem. She's amazing. I love her. Love, love, love her. Um, but yes. Um, so anyways, if you guys don't have anything else or anything else that you guys wanna talk about, I don't wanna keep you guys forever. I could be here for hours. Y'all mm -hmm. know that from our previous Tuesday night training. So. <laughs> um, but I know it's month end, and actually Heidi and Orville will be going live soon with all of their good Yes. Stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording so I can get this to down.